Hey, welcome to my podcast. My name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Tempe, Arizona. Welcome to the podcast. Here we are, part three. We're going to go into the understanding of when women take progesterone and it goes wrong. It's women who have the exact opposite response to it. So many of you, when you take it, it works great. You know, you have wonderful sleep. That's my favorite to hear back when you sleep like angels. That makes me feel like I'm doing such a good job. But then there are those of you who feel forgotten and lost because when you take it, it's not doing that. It does the exact opposite. I see you. This could be part three here. This is when we get a little bit of a weird biochemistry. It's all weird biochemistry. I say this every episode. And I'm trying to say it different. You know, I listen to podcasts and I know I always fast forward the first few minutes of them because they say the same thing. We're like, like, share, subscribe. They try to do different ways. I'm no better, am I? <laughs> I'm no better. I, uh, you know, what I'm going to say, <laughs> if you like what I'm doing, subscribe. If you like it a lot, you like this episode, press like. Share it to someone you think will help them. Let me know if you think I'm doing a good job. Definitely let me know about the biochemistry because I'm throwing stuff at you that I do this every day. I do it every day. I read this every day. I This is what I do. And just like if I were to go into your life and try and do your job or sit in your space and do the things you have to do every day, I, I wouldn't do a good job. I know it. But you know, if you spend time with me teaching me, I could do it. That's my philosophy. That's my motto. My role as a physician is to be able to be clear with you and communicate with you in a way that you hear me and you understand it. I'm not here to be smart. I'm here to be clear and to be understandable and helpful. That's it. That's it. To the degree that I'm doing it, I'm doing a good job. To the degree I'm not, I want to know. I love doing this. I want to do a good job. Help me do a good job. So let's talk about this next step. Progesterone. Cross the blood-brain barrier, should turn to allopregnenolone. Last episode, some women, allopregnenolone doesn't work right. It's either too high or too low, making them feel really funny, or, or it's fluctuating, causing that problem. It could be that these women have a history of complex PTSD, triggering that pathway and, 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 and causing some neural changes that make them respond to allopregnenolone with anxiety. It's like a reverse responding purely at the receptor. These are all things that we talked about, strategies to treat them. Today, I'm going to go into when you don't make allopregnenolone, but instead you make pregnenolone sulfate. Pregnenolone sulfate in a woman is like the flip side of allopregnenolone. Allopregnenolone, you feel relaxed, lofty, softy, everything's wonderful. Pregnenolone sulfate, it is um, with alacrity. It, it is a pro-anxiety agent. Okay, it goes to the same receptor, the GABA receptor, and modulates you more to or anxiety towards anxiety. The thing is, is everything in your body has to have a balance, pro-growth, inhibiting growth. You know what I mean? It goes, everything needs a balance here. With that said, this anxiety needs something to kind of trigger the other direction. The, the GABA receptor, this anti-anxiety, you need to have something kind of the other way. And anxiety is not evil. It's just when it's a standalone thing pushing you down a place where you're not able to be at peace in your life is not good. A little bit of anxiety can be motivating. It wouldn't be in your brain if it didn't serve a purpose. Let's put it that way. In terms of pregnenolone sulfate and the way that it works in the brain with the anxiety receptors, it helps you learn. Pregnenolone sulfate plays a huge role with your ability to consolidate information and learn. It's, it's a big thing. And there's a lot of research in that area, not about women's brain chemistry, but it is all about understanding how pregnenolone sulfate can help with learning. So pregnenolone sulfate plays a role with learning. It's a really cool thing for that. But when it's too high, it will trigger anxiety. It's just, just severe anxiety in people. So, so where we understand this more deeply is understanding PMDD. Now, this is something that's season PMDD. And PMDD, as I mentioned in the episode, it does have a lot of crossover with what I'm talking about today with, with uh, women reverse responders. So women of PMDD, we know, have high levels of pregnenolone sulfate. They tend to push that pathway too hard. So what we would want to do then as your physician, and again, there's no good studies on this, not enough. There's not really good labs I can use testing pregnenolone sulfate. 
this is the time when I come in the room with a woman and I say, this is what I have to work with. These are the things you want to do. So the first thing I want to do is try and slow down the conversion of pregnenolone to pregnenolone sulfate. I want to slow that pathway down. How do we do that? Diet. Diet works. It's supplements. Flavonoids in the food that you eat. Um, we found flavonoids are found in green tea, dark chocolate, apples, blackberries, cherries. You see quercetin that's found in onions, apples, berries again, broccoli, kale. I don't like kale. I don't like kale. You don't have to eat kale. I'm not going to prescribe you kale. <laughs> but green tea I do like. And buckwheat we do do well. Then there's the flavanones. Now, the flavanones are the more effective out of all of these. Um, that's to be found in lemons, limes, oranges, and uh, grapefruits. You can take, of all these things, quercetin as a supplement. And what that does is that helps slow down that pathway of pregnenolone to allopregnenolone. It slows it down. So you do quercetin, you know, uh, three times a day on an empty stomach. And um, that would be one of the approaches I would have for slowing down that pathway. I want to say that uh, one of the doctors I work with, um, Jess, um, Dr. Murdoch, she she talks a lot about in her treatments with patients, she's been using recently um, antihistamines with some success. I'm still waiting to talk to her more about this. We were talking about this last night. And she just brought up that she's been seeing some benefit of using that. So I want, to, I want you to know this is a work in progress. This whole series I'm talking about, I hope it becomes obsolete in a year because of all this new research. And I will circle back and I will keep doing this for you. And there's people of you that are at your home, you know, your pen and your paper, you're writing down everything I'm saying here because you are looking for something to help. And by the way, when you're writing this down, Quercetin, 200 milligrams, 250, you know, maybe. Try that out. That's a starting dose that I would recommend on that. You know, three times a day between meals. If you take quercetin with food, it doesn't, it's not as bioavailable, not as easily absorbed. You wouldn't do it on an empty stomach. Um, but I, I'm going to keep working on this. Every time I hear more material on it, every time I find more research on it, I'm going to circle back and do an addition to this because I, I know. Yeah, I, I hear you and I feel you. So, so what else can I do other than slow down that conversion of pregnenolone to allopregnenolone? Well, pregnenolone sulfate, it works on the something called the glutaminergic pathway. That's What is that? It means it uses glutamate. Glutamate is the neurotransmitter that it uses. And glutamate is excitatory by nature. So glutamate is something we want to see. One, can we modulate how much you have in your body? Can we detox it? Can we promote its elimination? Can we enhance its metabolism? Can we modulate it somehow? Yes, <laughs> to all of those things. And I want to tell you, those of you who've been doing um, posts to me and comments to me mentioning ADD and ADHD associations with reverse responders, this is your connection. This is for you because that's that glutamate pathway that you have in common. This is that glutamate thing. So what would help them? I would say try and adopt a low glutamate diet. So what is a low glutamate diet? You know, um, for the most part, um, we're going to use um, reducing soy sauce in their diet. We're going to be um, reducing aged cheeses. We're going to take out seaweed, mushrooms, tomato sauce. Um, you know, watch out for flavor enhancers like monosodium glutamate. I know there's a whole controversy about people saying monosodium glutamate one way or another. I'm not going to step into that tonight. I'm just going to say glutamate is glutamate is glutamate. Don't put it in your body if you have this as a, as a possibility. Um, so I'll have a patient take a low glutamate diet for a while along with a quercetin supplement, a lot more flavones and those other flavonoids as I mentioned earlier, these compounds. My goal being slowing down the conversion to pregnenolone sulfate with that process. And then the other one is see if I can reduce the amount of glutamate in the system and see if that helps. So that's the the primary steps you're taking. Uh, you know, other things you want to watch out for, um, not just the MSG, but, you know, take gluten out of your diet, you know, take dairy out, um, processed foods, you know, bone broth. Um, watch out for fermented foods like kefir, um, cheese, and preserved meats. These guys take them out. So that, that should help with that glutamate pathway. And then watch for symptoms. Another thing you want to consider is to how to improve glutamate metabolism. Uh, things like magnesium. We know that magnesium is an important thing to adopt in these cases because magnesium kind of has this counteracting with glutamate. 
We know that when you have low levels of magnesium, glutamate is a little more bioactive in the brain. So you want to, you want to push up the magnesium. That's why some of you, when you take magnesium, you sleep like an angel. It's because it's calming down that glutamate pathway. Other people, it's just a vasodilator. Blood flow goes everywhere and you're just all chill and relax. You just calm down. But, um, you know, try uh, magnesium, you know, 400 milligrams. I've got as high as 800 milligrams of uh, magnesium uh, citrate or um, glycinate. Everyone has different versions. I'll be honest with you. I'm a citrate guy. Malate, you fine, but magnesium citrate. Um, another one is vitamin D. Um, it, there's evidence that talks about how vitamin D, it protects against um, how glutamate can be um, neuroexcitatory. You, you want to be careful. You don't want to overload vitamin D. It, it is a fat-soluble vitamin. I'll say try it like in my patients. I run labs to tell them if they need to take it or not take it. I run labs to see if they need magnesium or don't mag need magnesium. I run labs on this stuff. But I know all of you don't have that opportunity. So so with, with vitamin D, you know, between five and 10,000 units. And when it comes to vitamin D, I mentioned magnesium citrate earlier because that's a good version of it. Same thing with vitamin D. Vitamin D, in my experience all these years doing it, you want to do a liquid version of it. Um, and I use um, Soroyal is a brand that I like. They make these things called sunshine drops. Again, they don't know me from Adam. They don't know I'm doing this. I'm not I'm not trying to sell you their product. I just tell you it's delicious. It tastes like lemon pie. It really is good. So one drop is 1,000 units. Five drops, just five, five drops. That's all you need. And then I'm not five droppers, like squeeze the droppers, just blip, blip, blip. That's, that's it, five of those. And uh, that's 5,000 units. And one of those bottles is like 1,000 units. It's a pretty good deal. So 5,000 units of that, that has been shown to improve um, the body's response, that neuroexcitatory neuro component of glutamate. That could be very helpful as well. Um, vitamin C, now everything in your body that's there has to be eliminated out. So what's the pathway? How do you get rid of glutamate? Vitamin C. Vitamin C plays a big role in its elimination. It's, it's um, uh, metabolism and so many of us are low in vitamin C. I've been running vitamin C labs on people and I have yet to see someone come in with good vitamin C off the off the blocks. Very rare. So vitamin C, you know, one to 3,000 milligrams a day. If you have loose stool, back it off a little bit. I find whenever I go bump three 3,000 milligrams, you start having more risk of side effects. Again, you just taper the dose back if you're having that problem. And I'll do 1,000 milligrams again three times a day, adding up to my 3,000 milligrams. See how that helps them as well. I prefer lab work, but if you don't have that, just try it out orally. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids are another one that does play a role um, with balancing how glutamate runs. So omega-3 fatty acids are by nature anti-inflammatory. And um, there's anecdotal stuff out there that talks about omega-3 fatty acids and the impact it has when people have a lot of glutamate um, neurologically. There is some benefit. It's worth trying. Um, I use Nordic Naturals. I know you're supposed to take three a day of it, Pro Omega. Um, I'll just do one to three. Again, that's another one I run my labs on my patients. I see how high it is. I do uh, Omega testing with them, and then we we um, we make that dose. I know it sounds like I'm like doing million dollar testing. This is not. It's like um, insurance covers these labs. <laughs> You know, I just, I run them through insurance and those, my patients don't have insurance. You know, we, we have good competitive pricing because we do so many labs. We have good pricing on my labs. They're not million dollar labs. You know, anything I can do to be helpful with them, but I, we don't, they're not million dollar testing. And if you don't have access to testing and you're interested in trying to get this tested in the States, I know using, um, life extension, that's a magazine that also makes supplements. They're a pretty good company. I've, I like them. Um, as I always, I'll tell you, no affiliation. But they they have good labs you can buy through them, and it runs through LabCorp, and it's the same stuff I use. I find their prices are competitive to my prices. So, I mean, I know I get really good prices, and if you get the same one through them, it's worth it. Because you are having this reaction that is making you feel like you're losing your mind. As much data as you can put in front of yourself to help you is better. It's just when you're that woman and you have no real knowing what's going to help you and not help you. Even with using supplements like this that you just buy over the counter and just experiment with, I want to be there with you and I want to do a good job to help you be supported and make decisions you can count on. 
the what if it just is something as silly as taking more vitamin C and vitamin D and magnesium and that was all you needed and now you don't have this. That would feel so good. That would be awesome. I'm going to call it at that because this is the material that I have and this is how I've been approaching it for some time now. There's different variants I'll do with them and different ways. Sometimes I need to lower their estrogen. I may prescribe something or use certain compounds to help modulate estrogen. There's different other things I'll do in here. But but at the end of the day, this is this is how I approach it. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments below. Please let me know how it can be more helpful and more clear for you. I promise to keep returning back to this material and keep bringing the best information I can and be as helpful as humanly possible to you. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you at the next episode.